When we released a recent episode about the artificial sweetener erythritol, many of you brought up questions about recent news on other artificial sweeteners, sucralose and aspartame. So we went to take a look, and that's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Artificial sweeteners are a popular topic, and we've made previous episodes on their safety for human health. There's no concrete data telling us that artificial sweeteners cause cancer or that they are otherwise harmful to our health. There are studies, so many studies, that suggest a relationship, but these are weak suggestions because the studies are done in petri dishes or conducted with mice or are observational in humans. The studies done with cells in petri dishes are extremely limited because they give us no information on how cells would react in their natural environment, and they often act very differently there than they do in a dish. The studies in mice are problematic because they don't generally translate well to the human body, and the doses of artificial sweetener are usually way, way higher than a human would consume. The observational studies tell us there is a correlation between artificial sweeteners and health, but it doesn't tell us anything about the relationship. And that's really important because it doesn't tell us if it's a causal relationship. Remember the golden rule of science, correlation does not equal causation. People who consume artificial sweeteners often have lifestyle differences when compared to people who do not consume these sweeteners. It is extremely likely that it is these differences, not the sweeteners, that are responsible for the reported health issues. It is nearly impossible to determine this for sure, though, because it would be really hard to run a trial where you controlled people's diets in enough detail to find an answer. So all that being said, let's take a look at the most recent study of concern, the 2023 one about sucralose and cancer risk. The study was done in vitro, basically meaning in a dish or with isolated cells, and examined sucralose 6-acetate, a metabolite of sucralose. They reported a handful of outcomes, including increased expression of genes that play a potential role in inflammation and cancer. While we understand that this seems alarming, we actually recommend taking these results in stride. The cells in our body live in extremely complicated environments, responding to the pushes and pulls of constant shifts and signals, with an entire cast of characters involved in the many cellular processes that are constantly ongoing in our bodies. Removing some of these cells and examining their reaction to one chemical alone in a dish only gives us the tiniest snapshot of an entire ongoing reel. Results like these can be helpful in giving us an idea of where to look, but they absolutely do not stand on their own as evidence of a causal relationship. And besides that, we've already got an endless parade of studies on artificial sweeteners and human health, and so far the evidence just doesn't hold up to the hype. But now onto the second piece of news, which seems considerably more alarming at face value, but is actually not that alarming at all. In July of 2023, the World Health Organization classified aspartame as possibly carcinogenic to humans. Let's give this more context. The committee responsible for assigning these classifications has four groups. One, which is definitely carcinogenic to humans. 2A, which is probably carcinogenic. 2B, which is possibly carcinogenic. And group three, which is not classifiable as carcinogenic due to lack of evidence. The thing about group 2B, which is where aspartame has been placed, is that it doesn't require strong evidence to be placed there. This group is for things that have limited evidence in humans and less than sufficient evidence in experimental animals. Basically, it means there's evidence, just not very good evidence. But it can't be entirely ruled out with the evidence we have or the evidence we can get, so it must remain in the possible category. This is unfortunately confusing as it doesn't convey just how weak the evidence is on the relationship between aspartame and cancer. And it isn't clear to many that this label means there's a possibility, not a probability. So no, we're not alarmed by either of these recent news items on artificial sweeteners, and we hope that providing this context has helped you feel the same. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on erythritol and health. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like this video. Subscribe to the channel down below and consider going on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Edward Lillaholm, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.